Um, you see the date is in June. There are a few, um, there are few changes I've made to, to update it, but uh, basically this is all we can present you at this time, and it gives you a good idea of what, what we have. Now, uh, contrary to what has been said, we're not mining, only in exploration at this point. Although we know that that's the goal, <coughs> we, we don't have any plans to, to do any mining at this point. Um, in the web, website you'll see that you have a, a disclaimer here, I'm the qualified person up here that has certified all of this presentation. <clears throat> um, that uh, the uh, where was I going? So the, you know, you can go on the website and read this, but it's, it takes a long time to read, obviously. So um, we this is what our website looks like, um, and here's the um, website address. If you'd like to have a have that, uh, uh, I can provide that to you later, or you can write it down. Uh, we also have a local website, uh, Keweenaw Copper, and just to explain the structure here, Highland Copper Company is a company, it's a Canadian stock company, that uh, venture capital company, completely funded by investor funds, and uh, in order to conduct this project on the Keweenaw, they formed this company called Ki uh, Keweenaw Copper. This is our website address right here. Um, at some point, we're going to link these two together, but uh, all of the uh, information on this particular website applies to this project here. Although I must say that um, Highland Copper has no other projects in the world other than the Western UP. Um, you can see there's the reference to Keweenaw Copper. Um, a lot of uh, Canadian companies have projects in Peru, they have projects in Spain, and they have projects in Canada. Uh, Highland Copper is 100% committed and, and focused on the Western UP. Now, here we are. The Western UP is, uh, the geology here is an extension of the mid-continent rift system that goes right down into Kansas here. And <laughs> this is a productive area that of, uh, for copper deposits on the Keweenaw Copper uh, province. Uh, the history, as you may, may not know, um, it was a major producer of copper, um, uh, 4.9 million tons of copper um, that were mined from flow tops, uh, lava flow tops in, um, uh, as native copper. And also, um, four and a half million ounces of silver byproduct. Much of the silver was was retained in the native copper, and uh, not recovered. And uh, because they produced what they call fire refined copper, basically they just melted down the the uh, the copper and poured it into ingots. And then now, these days you can't do that. That's uh, that's not a marketable product. Um, 1970 to 2005, I should say that this, the, the uh, project where or the mining mines were shut down due to a labor management dispute in 1968, and that's when mining ended. Homestead came in in 1974 uh, under a, a joint venture with International Nickel, and they um, had a very active program which sank the shaft at uh, Centennial 6 out at, uh, as you can see, the head frame going up on the Keweenaw, just outside of County Bend. We sank that shaft 3,000 feet. <clears throat> and uh, that project was not successful, but we were able to discover uh, two deposits uh, of significance called 543 South and G2 uh, that were um, hydrogen calcasite deposits in blob flow tops, similar in occurrence to the the native mm -hmm. copper, but, uh, but not, uh, uh, fortunately, high, it's a, it's a mineral that has a high percentage of copper in it, and it's not acid generating, mm -hmm. and I can talk a little bit more about that um, in the ensuing in talk. But there was a company called Great Lakes Minerals that uh, 
um, had intended to mine 543. Um, they did some minor infill drilling in the late 1990s. I think that's probably the early 1990s. Um, and uh, they were intended to ship ore down to White Pine, and they were shut down because uh, White Pine had uh, actually closed and dismantled their facility, so that, that was the end of, the, of their efforts. <coughs> so, uh, in the recent past, uh, the company called BL, BRP, uh, located in Houston, Texas, bought the mineral rights at 543 uh, from five, uh, International Paper, and uh, BRP is a subsidiary of uh, NRP, Natural Resource Partners, and uh, uh, it's a very convoluted uh, relationship, I don't understand this, but um, uh, thanks to my um, uh, efforts, I brought the, these prospects to um, Highlands of um, Highland Resources at that time um, to their attention, and uh, they were able to um, do a deal with BRP to explore the deposits in in that calcite zone. We um, were refinanced in 2012. They raised about 16 and a half million dollars, so we're. Uh, started our drilling program in July 2012. 